Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, I am Jasjeet and in today's video I will share with you a path you can follow to study in Australia with absolutely zero cost. Instead, you will get paid a monthly allowance of about 2000 Australian dollars for your living expenses. This topic is very special to me and I will be sharing my personal experiences of following this path myself and setting up a great future for me and my family in this beautiful country we call Australia. This video is specifically for overseas students who hold a honours or a master's degree. I hope you all are excited to know what it is. Yes, my friends, I am talking about PhD or Doctor of Philosophy. Today, I will be answering 10 most frequently asked questions about PhD. Let's get into it. What is PhD? PhD is the highest academic qualification you can obtain in the course of your study. Just like your bachelor's and master's degree, PhD is also a degree. What are the entry requirements for a PhD? To be eligible to do a PhD, you should either have a 4 years honours degree or a master's degree. If your plan is to do PhD from overseas, just like I did, you also need to pass an English language skill test. Entry requirements can vary depending on your course provider. So what do you do in a PhD? In PhD, you choose a topic of study in your area of expertise. Then you have to search and read published research papers or reports about what others have done in your specific topic and find what value you can add to the existing knowledge. For example, your contribution could be designing an improved method to conduct an experiment or coming up with a new application for an existing product or it could be better understanding of the fundamental concepts using new and advanced techniques. Your research should be original or new. That is something that no one has done before you. This does not mean that you have to come up with brand new ideas. You can combine two different pre-existing ideas and create something that is unique and wasn't known before or you can use an advanced technique to get insights that you didn't know before. After you have new ideas, you have to test those ideas by planning and conducting experiments. After that, you have to gather and analyze data and make conclusions. You may also conduct statistical analysis on your results to understand if they are of any significance. Towards the end of your PhD, you have to produce your original work in writing in the form of a thesis of up to 100,000 words, which is examined by experts in the field who are external to your university. How long does a PhD take? In Australia, PhD takes about 3 to 4 years for a full-time course and up to 8 years for a part-time course. How much does a PhD cost? PhD can cost if you do not have a scholarship. The fee can be twenty to $40,000 per year for overseas students. The fee can vary depending on the university and your area of research. If you get a scholarship, you are waived off any tuition fee and you get paid stipend of twenty five to 30000 Australian dollars a year. So it is the best way to study without worrying about earning for living expenses. Is getting PhD scholarship competitive in Australia? Getting a scholarship can be quite competitive, so having excellent academic background will increase your odds of getting a scholarship. But do not get put down by academic excellence. Even if you are an A or a B grade student, you should still apply because you can only win a lottery if you buy a ticket. How can you find a PhD project? There are many different ways you can look for a PhD. Path 1 is direct application to the university. There are four steps involved in this process. Step 1 is choose your research area, explore different Australian universities and find out their major research areas. Then pick the universities where your research interest lies. To explore this, you can go to Study in Australia website, then go to the specific university website and click on the research section. Step 2 is find a supervisor who is willing to supervise you and your PhD. You can do this by emailing professors or research fellows individually 
who work at the university you wish to study and send them your resume, cover letter and your motivation behind joining their team. I emailed about 200 to 300 researchers and only two of them agreed to be my supervisors. So it is a lot of hard work to put best impression on the professor you are applying to, connect with them on their LinkedIn profile, read their latest research and tell them if you found their paper interesting and why. Step 3 is apply for PhD application online. Once you have a supervisor agreed to supervise you, you can make a PhD application online. Remember that applying for PhD does not guarantee scholarship. You have to make a separate application to waive off your tuition fee and to receive a fixed sum of money every month. Scholarships are generally awarded on academic merit. Step 4 is apply for a scholarship, your academic record and a referral letter from your previous academic supervisor who can comment on your research ability and attitude will play an important role to get your scholarship. Part 2 is applying directly to an advertised PhD project. Sometimes a research team receives funding from industry partners or government to conduct research. Such positions are advertised by the receiver of these grants who is a research fellow or a professor. In this pathway, you do not need to apply directly to the university. Instead, you apply to the person who advertised this position. In most cases, such positions are most likely to waive off tuition fee and offer full scholarships. I myself applied through this path and received an offer to do a PhD with full scholarship, which I gladly accepted. Part 3 is be proactive and ask. You can email professors or research fellows asking them if they are advertising any PhD position in their area in the near future. You can read a few research papers published by them and use those as a starting point in your email saying that you really like their work. Path 4 is networking. International conferences give you an opportunity to network with researchers from overseas. Choose the conference in the field you are interested in and look at the keynote speakers and invited speakers profiles and see if it interests you. Send them an email beforehand that you would like to meet them at the conference and catch up during breaks or after their talk. Ask them for PhD advice and tell them your intention. Part 5 is get sponsored. It may be possible that your current university or institute have tie-ups with some overseas university and they are obliged to send their top graduates for a PhD overseas. I personally know some students who followed this path. What are the 5 soft skills you develop during PhD? There are a variety of soft skills you will develop during your PhD. First is project management. To manage your PhD project, you have to set your project milestones with deadlines and look at any risks that might impact these deadlines. Second is time management. The project requires completion in a given time, that is three to four years. So it becomes so important to stay focused and prioritize your work. Third is collaboration. At times, you might develop a skill that others have a demand for. You can collaborate with your co-workers or people from other universities. But before doing any of this, you should seek consent from your supervisor and set clear expectations of you and the people you are collaborating with. Fourth is oral and written communication. You learn to present your research to your supervisors and peers from time to time and seek their feedback. You learn to write research papers and your thesis. Fifth is problem solving and critical thinking. You think critically about existing research. Look for weak links and find ways to make it better. What is the best skill a PhD should have? In PhD, you really should be a person who is self-driven or self-motivated. PhD is mostly one-man show, which means your research topic is unique and you have to take initiatives to solve it. What are the three advantages and three disadvantages of doing a PhD? The three advantages are you get to use doctor as a title in your name. Second, you become expert in your field. And third, the whole world is open for you as science is universal. Three disadvantages of doing a PhD are overthinking. You just 
think too much. Number two, a lot of time commitment which might impact your work-life balance. Number three, lag in your professional career as you are still a student. If this video has convinced you that you should do a PhD, give me a thumbs up. Now, have you subscribed to my channel? If you haven't just yet, then do it now as it tells me that you appreciate my work and I will put more hard work and bring more educational stuff for you. Tell me in the comments below what is the best skill according to you a PhD student should have. I'm waiting to see your comments and your viewpoint. Take care and I will see you in the next video.